our next presenter, Barry Fell and Randy Howitt, representing Cranial Devices. Take it away. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to introduce Hydrofix to you, a minimally invasive surgical solution for hydrocephalus. Along with my co-founder, Dr. Randy Halleck from the College of Medicine, we were the previous first place winners in the 2016 Tech Tournament, co-founders of SIG Medical, which was later sold to Zimmer Biomed in uh, 2019. Hydrocephalus is a $3 billion annual healthcare cost. Roughly a million patients are currently diagnosed with the disease in the US. Hydrocephalus is too much CSF fluid around the brain. There is no cure. Patients undergo a lifetime of repeated surgical treatments and hydrocephalus shunts have the highest failure rate of any medical implant being sold today. The initial market segment that we're gonna focus on is NPH, normal pressure hydrocephalus. It's primarily found in the elderly. Symptoms are often confused with Alzheimer's, but the symptoms can be reversed with shunting. Currently, there's three quarters of a million patients with NPH diagnosis in the US. However, only 1% of the patients are currently being treated because of this high failure rate of the implant. The conventional shunt problem is that they're too long. They siphon and they overdrain the CSF. Overdrainage over in the MPH patient can lead to fatal cranial bleeding. MPH patients deserve a better solution. For the right product, a significant market opportunity exists. By 2025, there'll be almost a million MPH patients in the US. If you serviced only 1% of that population, that market opportunity is almost $70 million. The Hydrofix solution is elegant. Hydrofix will drain CSF directly into the venous system. It restores the normal physiologic pathway. It significantly shortens the shunt length. It eliminates siphoning and overdrainage problems. It's the perfect solution for NPH patients. Cranial Devices was formed in November 2020 to bring Hydrofix to the market. We already have an experienced leadership team in place, strong IP, comprehensive development plan is already in place. Hydrofix will be on the market in the first quarter of 2023. Patient surgeons, hospital payers, they'll all benefit from its use, resulting in a rapid market adoption. In summary, it's a large, distinct US market opportunity with worldwide appeal, strong IP position. Hydrofix will be uh, able to gain a breakthrough device designation under the new CMS policy called Medicare Coverage of Innovative Technology. We'll be seeking roughly $7 million in financing through 2022. We expect to be profitable by 2024. We already have high interest from major medical device companies and private equity. Thank you. Okay. Hi, uh, so I see that you were, um, you know, one of the things that you were thinking about talking about was your use of funds. So yes. perhaps you could tell us a little bit about how you're gonna use the funds. Sure, we, um, you can, this, I'm sorry. Right, everything's going through too quickly at this end. Okay, that's our timeline. If we're gonna do a 510K uh, pathway, uh, we could be on the market by January, 2023. However, we realize that there's, there's, a, um, uh, there's a benefit to doing de novo or PMA because of special controls. There's actually more value to the investors if we go that route, which would push our market release out into 2024, 2025. Okay. So if we're going to do just 510K, then we estimate that we will raise about $12 million uh, to do that for the 510K pathway. Obviously, it would be more if we do anything involving uh, clinical trials. And have you made a, dis a determination which way you're going to no, go? No, we've right? got a pre-sub meeting coming up here in a few months. Okay. Uh, that will probably have several meetings with the FDA. But uh, it, it's reasonable to assume that we'll have some either a very limited market release if we do go 510K, but most likely we expect to go de novo or PMA. All right. Very, uh, very interesting. Um, thanks for the presentation. A couple of quick questions. One is what sort of chronic animal data do you have that established that this in fact will last much longer than the uh, current device? Well, sheep is the, the animal of choice for these. Uh, but also there's about 30 years of experience out there already uh, doing this type of drainage into a sinus. Uh, just right now, they're just taking a simple catheter to do it. Uh, and the failure rate of that is extremely low. So we know it works. What we need to do is make it a more um, standardized pr procedure. 
Okay. Um, one other quick question. You know, you guys have been at this for, for a while and nobody knows better than me that it takes a long time to develop these kinds of things. But I'm just curious if any of the big players in the space have come knocking and uh, if you've talked with them, what, uh, what has prevented them from moving on the company already? Uh, nothing, but we've been trying to keep kind of low profile, but yes, we've already had a few pretty hard knocks on the door. What was their reaction? Um, you know, follow on meetings. <laughs> and, uh, but again, we are somewhat limited on, on how much we're willing to disclose, but also just, uh, I didn't get to that, uh, the uh, IP slide, but mm -hmm. we had some uh, uh, provisionals that were converting here. In fact, we'll convert this week actually. Uh, and they won't be published for another, you know, six to eight months, probably. Okay, thank you. Sure. Thanks, Barry. I have a question about um, the strategy. So you talked about um, the 1 million hydrocephalus patients and you were targeting the majority of those patients. Did you ever consider targeting a smaller, like a rare disease set of patients? Would that make sense at all? Yes. I mean, the, the one that tears your heart out is the pediatric market, but that's actually a more complicated one. The forms and causes of hydrocephalus are a little bit different there. Plus, plus you have to deal with the growth uh, of, the, of the child. The adult market, especially the NPH, you have a, I mean, not to sound, you know, kind of cold, but you have a, a finite amount of years that you're going to live, you're going to live. And if we can improve the quality of life, we can we can uh, really produce enough funding to to then go after the pediatric market. Okay, thanks. Okay. Probably more key here is, I didn't get to it, but, you know, last week the CMS policy was changed. So the, the MCIT program that they started guarantees uh, funding or essentially payment of uh, any device for uh, under Medicare for four years after your release of the product. That's significant because now we're not fighting which codes are we going to use, uh, even though we probably think that we're, we meet the existing you know, codes that are out there now, this kind of clarifies that point completely. Can I ask Rand Randy a quick question? I'm curious, um, how much more difficult would this be to implant than the standard version? Uh, <clears throat> The, that's that's where the challenge is. So as, as you saw, uh, you know, in that slide, we want to put this into a dural venous sinus, and 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 that's where the challenge and that's where the opportunity also is. So our IP is is centered around um, localizing and precisely placing a very low profile uh, outlet or intrusion into that dural venous sinus. So there is there is a little bit of a hurdle there. Um, but again, that's, that's where our IP is. And again, that's where our opportunity is. Thanks. We have a pretty substantial fence around us from an IP point of view. As, as Barry said, this, this approach, jumping directly into this dural venous sinus is, is known to work. There are challenges, as you said, Bruce, and then there, there's, there's a lack of standardization in, in the procedure. All right, thank you, and we are at time. So judges, thank you for your great questions, and Barry and Randy, thank you for an excellent presentation.